Moses was an Egyptian. Sigmund Freud, Moses and Monotheism. Hello and welcome back. Don Quixote is offended when Montesinos compares the beauty of Belerma to that of Dulcinea, and he produces another prosaic interruption. Hold on now, Sir Montesinos. Tell your story as you should, for your grace knows full well that all comparisons are hateful. Note this intrusion of meta-literary reflection on the art of storytelling within Don Quixote's dream inside the cave of Montesinos. And now the criticism comes from outside the dream, too. Sancho recalls the old Don Quixote, I'm astonished that your grace did not jump on the old man and thrash all his bones with kicks and then rip out his beard, leaving not a single hair. Don Quixote insists on civility. No, Sancho, my friend, because we are all obliged to respect our elders. Then they debate the experience of time. The cousin objects that all this could not have happened in such a small space of time. Sancho informs Don Quixote he was in the cave a little over an hour. Don Quixote says he was down there for three whole days, and Sancho explains this as an effect of enchantment. Again, in part two, Sancho is more prone to adopt Don Quixote's surreal perspective from part one. Note also that here we have a kind of metaphysical debate that anticipates Hobbes. The cousin asks if enchanted people eat. Don Quixote's response is hilarious. They do not eat, nor do they have bowel movements. He adds that they did not sleep for three days. Sancho now turns a moral refrain into something literal. Tell me the company you keep and I'll tell you who you are. Translation, Don Quixote is an enchanted character in a chivalric fantasy. What does this say about his companions? But note how Don Quixote still insists on realism. The theme of St. Thomas reappears. What I have told I saw with my own eyes and touched with my own hands. Don Quixote says that there were other infinite things and marvels that Montesino showed me, but now he turns to the most amazing part of this adventure. Suddenly, he sees three peasant girls who came jumping and bouncing through these pleasing fields like nanny goats. The reference is to the three graces, but of course, they turn out to be Dulcinea and the two women whom Sancho and he had seen in Don Quixote Part 2, Chapter 10. Did you know Don Quixote is approximately 50 years old during the entirety of Cervantes' novel, which around 1600 would have placed him very much at death's door. Don Quixote's unconscious finally reveals his true anxiety. Montesinos remarks that these women must be other enchanted spirits, adding that he has even seen Lancelot down there. Recall that Don Quixote has often identified with Lancelot. Now Don Quixote argues with Sancho, who knows that these women are his own invention. The squire accuses his master of telling the craziest nonsense that anyone could imagine. Don Quixote remains remarkably calm. Since I know you, Sancho, I shall ignore your words. Amazingly, as Don Quixote asks Montesinos how he might disenchant Dulcinea, who refuses to talk to him and rides off, one of the other two maidens approaches with a specific request on behalf of her mistress. She implores your grace with utmost urgency to be so kind as to lend her half a dozen reales, or however many your grace might have, accepting as collateral this new cotton underskirt that I have here, for she gives her word that she will repay you without delay. So Don Quixote is on the brink of obtaining Dulcinea's underskirt, and all because she is in need of a loan. Don Quixote is shocked by the mundane needs of the enchanted. Is it possible, Lord Montesinos, that distinguished persons who are enchanted can suffer from need? What follows echoes the era's moral debates over financial instruments, especially regarding charity versus profit in the motives of those who would loan money at interest. Montesinos insists Dulcinea's request is real. That which they call need is present in all places, and it extends to everyone everywhere, and it doesn't even spare the enchanted. And since Lady Dulcinea sends her servant 
to ask for those six reales, and since the pledged garment seems to be of good quality, then there's nothing to do but to give them to her. Don Quixote won't accept her collateral, but he still gives the maiden four reales, which is all he has, which were the ones that you, Sancho, gave me the other day to give as alms to the poor whom I might come across on the road. Don Quixote remarks that he wishes he were a banker so that he could give her more. My friend, tell your mistress that my soul is saddened by her troubles and that I wish I were a fugger so that I might remedy them. All this alludes to Spain's repeated bankruptcies at that time, but it's also an important meditation on the thematic relation between commerce and enchantment. How much money does Don Quixote give to Dulcinea in the cave of Montesinos? A. Six escudos. B. Four reales. C. Four ducados. Correct answer B. Four reales. Don Quixote now says he will dedicate himself to disenchanting Dulcinea. Sancho is shocked and becomes aggressive towards his master. Oh, sir, sir, for God's sake, let your grace look after himself and take back your honor. And don't give credit to these vapidities which have dwindled and waned your good sense by half. Don Quixote is confident that with time, Sancho will come to accept the truth of what he has seen in the cave of Montesinos. That's all for now. We've finished module one. Don't even think about not signing up for module two. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman, Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.